However, there is the next tool which will allow us to easily modify existing shapes and that is the brush tool. So I can use the polygon as you've seen, but I can also use the brush clicking inside any existing shape and then just basically paint around it. And then this will allow me to modify an existing shape without having to worry about these little handles. I can also create an entirely new annotation using the brush tool as well. And this is one of the most useful tools, I think. Inevitably, you will most likely draw things larger than you necessarily want them to be. If I hold down the Alt key, then it becomes an eraser tool and that allows me to clean up the annotation. And what you'll notice is that with the brush tool, unlike all the others that we've met, it doesn't switch back to turn on the move tool after I'm done. The reason for that being that if you're using the brush, I find that generally speaking, you're probably going to want to lift the mouse to modify the shape and edit it and so on. So if I want to then go back onto the move tool afterwards, I have to either press the button here or press the shortcut M. And I have the move tool activated. And moving to the next one then, it's similar to the brush tool, but it's the wands tool. And unlike the brush, which basically creates circles and adds circles to the existing annotation, the wands tool will use the pixel information in the image in order to determine what shape is actually being added. But apart from that, the idea still applies that if I hold down the Alt key, it'll turn into subtract mode. And so this becomes pretty powerful, especially if I want to get complex shapes or maybe subtract regions from an existing annotation. So if I hold down the Alt key with the wand, I can actually remove these areas within my larger polygon. And if I lift the Alt key, then I can add in additional areas if I go too far. Whenever I do this, it's not maybe entirely obvious when I have three little selected annotations inside one large big one, or if these are actually three little holes. In order to be able to see that, I should fill in the annotations. With a few fill annotations, the, shift, the shortcut is Shift and F. I can do that, and this gives me a visualization then of the annotations filled in, and I can see that these are holes as opposed to additional annotations. In order to make this, I took advantage of another useful benefit of both the brush and the wand is that they depend upon the magnification. So if I want to annotate a large region with let's say the wand, I just zoom out. But if I want to apply exactly the same tool and annotate let's say at a nucleus level, all I have to do is zoom in. And what you can see is that sometimes the wand is a little bit hard to control, but pressing B for brush then means that I can switch onto the brush tool and get more control. So if the intensity and the contrast is good, the wand is probably going to be much easier than the brush. But if I find that it's uncontrollable, then the brush gives me the tool which is easier to modify and refine shapes. And both of these then depend upon the extent to which I'm zoomed in. So if you have a pressure sensitive graphics tablet, then you may find that it's able to help with your annotations by adjusting uh, the width of the, the, the brush as you draw. But you don't really need that. All you need to do is to keep your finger on the scroll wheel and to zoom in and zoom out. And this gives you better control as to whether you're annotating large regions or small regions. Press the Alt key to subtract. And through a combination of B for brush, W for wand, Alt key to subtract, zooming in, zooming out, you can create some very detailed annotations very quickly. And that can be extremely useful in practice. And you especially benefit whenever there's good contrast within the image and the region that you want to get. Something else that I'll just mention when I'm here is a tip that I, I only discovered myself kind of, kind of later, is that it's quite hard to annotate exactly the region that you want with the brush or the wand, or with the wand in particular. But it can be easier if you annotate too much, press the Alt key, and then from outside, just kind of push the annotation back to where it was meant to be. And so when the contrast is not quite good enough, it can help to annotate too much. And then starting from outside with the wand, then just push back your annotation to the boundary that you want it to be at. But it can take a bit of practice with each of them and toggling between the brush and the wand 
to get the result that you want.